Hi, welcome to this Double Tap walkthrough. Double Tap is a two-stage multi-band compressor saturator that aims to replace all the compressors you would use as part of your bass mixing process. It's equally at home on organic bass, virtual basses such as our Grove bass and gin bass, upright basses, acoustic basses, and of course, EDM sub synths. It boils down what would otherwise be a highly complex multi-track, multi-band mixing chain into the one intuitive scalable interface. So let me show you how it's used. Right, here we have a lovely song by Stephen Rose that we're using Grove Bass on as our bass. We're using it in flat DI mode as any bass would come out, and we're running it into a Dark Glass Ultra, into a very basic EQ chain, just notching a few frequencies out here and there. You can, of course, recreate this chain yourself if you so wish. Super basic single track chain. Now, we're going to focus on the features of Double Tap as it relates to this. So let me play you the section that we'll be listening to first. All right, so the bass sounds like this. Pretty much stock good tone that you would get out of a Dark Glass-esque pedal. So, engage Double Tap. Here we are. So, Double Tap has three main sections. We have the Low Comp, which is a low frequency compressor that deals with only compressing the low frequencies of the tone. We have the broadband frequency compressor over here, which compresses as a standard compressor would. And we, of course, have the saturation section here in the middle, which adds a really great finishing touch to bass tones. So I'm going to show you how to use double tap to affect very, very quickly, knowing these settings to get a bass tone that I think is just about ideal. And we're done, believe it or not. That's as long as it takes to dial in double tap. Now, of course, I'm gonna fill in the gaps for you. Why did I do what I did and why was the sequence what it was? So, you want to begin by using the low compressor. The gain reduction lights are not numbered because they're intentionally meant to be aiming for a particular range rather than an actual figure. So I've specifically dialed these under the hood to make sure that the sweet spot is the orange for the low comps. You want to dial this up until it's somewhere in the orange. That might be a little bit more aggressive than we might want. Anywhere from about two green to two orange is a really good range, depending on the sort of bass that you're using. If it's very, very uh, thuddy, low root note thumping bass, then more is usually better. If it's very, very high um, lead S kind of fusion bass, then of course less is more. Now, this underneath here is the low frequency volume. You use this in order to get the low frequencies back into alignment with the mids and the highs after you um, set the low comp. The low comp has an auto gain feature which won't exactly match the gain on output, so you do have to tweak this manually just ever so slightly, which is what I've done down here. I usually knock it back a little bit to get the lows back into alignment. After this, you move to the low comp. Usually about two green is fine, maybe sometimes one orange, two orange. I would not recommend going into the red unless you absolutely have to. Of course, Grove Bass is very, very well performed, very, very dynamically consistent, so we don't need that much compression. Now, the next step is our two forms of saturation. Glue is a soft, a soft saturation based on Flatline's Wave Shaper. It gives you the sound of perhaps what you would consider to be a classic analog console. It has a very cool gluing effect. It brings the bass into the bed of the mix, whereas Grunt is my personal favorite uh, type of bass saturation that I came upon over 11 years ago that I've loved ever since. We have perfectly reverse engineered it, and Grunt gives you a push through the mix. It allows the bass to really stick out so you can really hear what's going on. So let me just play this back to you with the entire mix running. And a different section for you.
All right, so that is the bulk of the features in Double Tap. We also have EDM mode, which we're going to explore in detail in a future walkthrough video. EDM essentially changes the under the hood operation of all of these functions to better suit the plugin to uh, EDM subsense and more aggressive purposes. Up here, we of course have the standard array of features. If you click the submission audio logo, you'll find the show hints, the manual, visit our website, connect with our community, I believe on Facebook, we have contact support directly, and of course the version of Double Tap that's currently installed. We have the standard array of features such as undo, redo, uh, A to B versions. So you can copy or rather compare between two different types of settings on Double Tap to find what works better for you. And of course, the copy button, which copies the setting from A to B or from B to A conversely. We also have the the, the preset menu rather. The preset menu is not populated because this is currently a pre-release version of the plugin, but I assume that it will be once you get your hands on it. And that is the basic operation of Double Tap. Make sure to hit the subscribe button down here to stay up to date with future submission audio news and new product releases. And of course, click up here to see part two of this video where we use EDM mode to actually dial the plugin specifically toward EDM subsense.